it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and if you caught us uh, in the first week of November doing a live stream here on the old YouTube channel, you'll know that uh, I brewed up a Harvest Ale, it's basically just uh, American Pale Ale, using all, well, some of the hops that I grew in my backyard. But I will say it's all the hops from my Chinook plant that, uh, that I uh, harvested this year. Um, so, wow. this particular beer, um, I will go through the recipe right now as uh, Mike evaluates and takes a look at this. Uh, what we did was, this is a 6.5 US gallon, 24.6 liter boil size. Let's go down the grain bill, 83% uh, rawr. Pale malt for my recipe was 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms. 8% special roast malt, one pound or 0.45 kilograms. 4% rawr white wheat malt, that's a half pound or 0.22 kilograms. And also 4% faucet oat malt, 0.5 pounds and or 2.2 kilograms. So these, uh, the wheat malt and the oat malt were left over in my fridge from- That's the way to go. You know, those um, specialty grain comparisons. For hops, again, all Chinook hops from uh, my backyard. We started off with uh, 2.5 ounces, that's 71 grams, first wort hop, <laughs> Hopping. Um, I was going to add that right at the beginning of the boil, but we were doing a live stream and it just became, eh, I'll just throw them in now. Uh, after that, uh, with 20 minutes to go in the boil, 2.5 ounces, 71 grams. And then lastly, it was going to be flame out, but uh, we'll let it go. Two minutes to go in the boil, two ounces, 57 grams. If I um, connect all of those. <clears throat> Go ahead. Ounces together multiplied by the perceived alpha acids, which is, we'll say 11%. We got uh, 77 alpha acid units for this particular recipe. I went to Brewer's Friend just as a, as a you know, a funny game. You should. And I did. And I, and I did use their uh, IBU calculation with like the 100% utilization. Oh, 100%, yeah. Like, of course. It was <laughs> The IBUs were like 150 plus. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah. We'll talk about what your bitterness uh, perception is in a bit. For yeast, we had one packet of Lau Brew Verdant, Verdant, Verdant IPA yeast. Funny thing about this, I thought it was Verdant, like the Green Mountains of Vermont, but no, it's named after a brewery in the UK. Did you know that? Uh, I thought I heard it. I didn't, don't remember that inherently. I think of it as what you were describing too, yeah. but. I did hear that recently. Just a funny coincidence. Yeah. So I looked it up and it's, uh, it's actually a UK uh, brewery. So kudos to them. Extra stuff that we added to this. Uh, a, a Camden tablet added to the water right before the boil and a Whirlflock tablet uh, added with 15 minutes to go in the boil. That uh, produced a lot of um, funny flocculation. Mm. You know, I was gonna, I looked up the, uh, the IPA yeast, the, the, the verdant IPA yeast. I was looking, it's like a medium Flocculator? Yeah, but I thought it was like, wow, it's all sticking together, but just made for fun fermentation views. And then lastly, let's talk stats. I mashed this at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes, fermented at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius for two weeks. Starting gravity was 1051, and then final gravity was 1011. I'm gonna give myself, it was like, 10, 11, 10, 12, I'm gonna give myself that extra point. Uh, for 5.25% alcohol by volume, that is the 2021 Harvest Dale. What do you think about this beer? Well, when you first poured it, and I you know, got my first few whips of it, uh, the very first thing that came to mind when I first smelt it was actually something in the Sierra Nevada mm. uh, genre of beers. Specifically, Oops. at first, I was thinking about um, Celebration, Sierra Nevada Celebration. Um, so that's to say then, it has notes of uh, grapefruit pith hmm. and grapefruit rind, not a lot of grapefruit fruit, uh, but it's very grapefruity. And there's a lot of pine there on the yep. nose too. Very Agreed. resiny, piney. Uh, the appearance there is, you know, it's got a nice um, deep straw to light gold color, uh, looking pretty good. I uh, love the color of it. It's interesting, um, 
as a being having a pound of special roast in there, that's really where all that color is coming from. Yeah. It's actually somehow worked out really well <laughs> color wise. Um, I would never think to use a pound of special roast, but the flavor profile is um, definitely get more of the grapefruit, the pithiness, and there's a lot more of that Chinook classic, like very, it's a resiny, it's very yeah. resiny. Yep. It's very West Coast, or I should even say, uh, craft brewing, you know, 95 to 2005. It's very um, that way. Um, the flavor is nice. I don't really taste um, like the, that special roast. No, I don't either. I was going to ask about that. Because I think it's probably down underneath all of that, that hopness, which is um, really great. But it's probably also supporting it and keeping it in check a little bit. Otherwise, I bet it would be, the perceived bitterness would be even higher. Uh, the bitterness itself, the straight up bitterness, it's um, relatively high for, um, you have two and a half gra uh, ounces of, of hop in there, first wort. Um, it's got a pretty good bitterness and it's still coating my palate afterwards. I mean, it's, um, but it's not, it's a strong bitterness and it's classical hopping bitterness, but it's not uh, overly harsh yeah. uh, on the finish. It's not something that I don't want to drink more of. Um, as far as stylistically, the way it goes for me, I mean, I really am enjoying this beer. I don't know how many of these I would drink in a in a run just because of that bitterness, and I've gotten so accustomed to not drinking bitter beer anymore. Yeah, I know. Because we just, there's just a ton of bitter beer out there. I don't know if that yeast is kicking out a little bit of uh, glycerol or stuff like that. Sometimes that, that you know, that's a thing. Um, but it's really sort of smoothed over the edges of the hop character and melded it well with the malt. Um, you know, I wish I had something to compare that, that verdant yeast too, but it has fermented really well. It's super clean. Yeah. I, I don't know, I don't, you know, there's not like any strong estuary profile from it. Uh, it's, there's zero, that five and a quarter percent alcohol is not detectable. Yeah, overall impression is I think uh, this is probably the best ale version with homegrown hops if you want to have like a classic old school pale <laughs> ale with that yep. that bitter hop drive and yep. from homegrown hops yep. that in of itself is pretty impressive yeah well i think so what i was trying to do number one i wanted to see if you detected that soft on the palate um experience i don't even know what else to say it's because yeah, it's, it's like a coating yeah yeah and i wonder if that is yeast derived but also you know there are there's there's a little bit of oat malt and there is a little bit of white wheat malt in there yeah, too yeah. so that could have that could add mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. um I was, I was comparing this to last year because last year we actually it was not only just the the grapefruit and the piney, but there were some like fruity notes, like more tropical notes yeah, yeah. to that beer too. Yeah. And um, I, I, I think that if we discussed this maybe on the live stream or what, but uh, having that uh, that one beer left over from 2020 mm -hmm. and I had that and then it, a lot of those notes went away. Yeah, because they're but, very subtle. Yeah. Yes, right. Delicate. But, but um, it was still pretty clean and such. It, yeah. it was a little age, but it was good. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I think that uh, I could probably, I have to make a note for myself that I don't need to use all the hops <laughs> in this beer, but certainly I wanted to so I could have something that would be a nice winter celebration ale type yeah. experience. And I think that's what we have here. I think the sure. quantity is more than adequate. I mean, I wouldn't, if you, you, if you knew you were gonna have the exact same hop again in the future, I wouldn't do it any less than this. Cause this is, mm. This is, unless you really want to go for something different, but, um, or maybe do something like just all late hopping to see if there is any of that tropical note right, in there, yeah, right? Yeah. But this, as what I expect it to be, um, f now that I know what, I mean, it's just, it is classical. Yeah. I haven't had a beer like this in such a long time. I, I actually really sort of am really enjoying it, although regularly I, I probably wouldn't buy it and consume no, it, right? But, no. but I am really, really enjoying yeah. it because it has come out, it's been brewed so well and those hops are doing their thing so well. Um, it's amazing, the, the homegrown hop thing uh, in this in this particular beer. Yeah, so thumbs up on the verdant uh, yeah. ale yeast for sure. Uh, I was watching this thing pretty uh, steadily. Uh, looking at the specs on their site, or on the uh, Lalaman site, uh, you know, they said uh, fermentation time would be five days. Of course, I just let it 
do its thing for two weeks and I knew that we needed a video for this uh, Thanksgiving week, <laughs> so I let it roll. And so this has been in the keg since uh, Saturday. Yeah. You know, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. So that's great. I look forward to it. Should be good on Thanksgiving. Should be good. Yeah, should be great. In December and January. This definitely cut through some like meaty turkey gravy, <laughs> gravy. type of thing. You <laughs> know, gravy. Yeah. Uh, work through like um, you know, even like a stuffing with a lot of herbs mm. in it and stuff would probably work pretty well. Mm. Um, now that it's warmed up a little bit, I think I am getting a little bit of a, a, like a candied pineapple on the late palate. So it's it, it's interesting. Yeah, check out the specs uh, on the the Verdant uh, IPA yeast because they they do you know talk about the the peachy notes, the the trop the troppy tropical fruit mm -hmm. notes, mm -hmm. you know stone fruits of course, um, and I think that with you know more of those new age hops, you're probably gonna detect more of that in your final beer, but with good old uh, American Pacific Northwest hops grown in, you know, the Northeast, <laughs> you know, it's a little different, but it's still yeah. great. And I'm glad that I, I chose that strain after uh, going to the local homebrew store and, and picking it up. So great. So that's the follow up to the live stream. Ooh. We brewed it, we kegged it, we tasted it, and it's all on YouTube. Uh, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like this uh, video. Subscribe to our channel. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you in the USA. And uh, for John and Mike, brewdashdudes.com, brew on. Cheers.